1991, the apartheid legislation was abolished. And in 1994, we had our first democratic election. We all celebrated, well, not me because I wasn't born yet, but we all celebrated the end of an oppressive era and believed in the dream of the rainbow nation. But somehow, on the 10th of May, 1994, we all believe that racism ended. And now we live in a disillusioned rainbow nation. We are beginning to understand that racism didn't end. It transformed and became institutionalized. It has manifested into the school grounds and infected teachers and students with toxic prejudices. Most of us would have heard of the St. John's catastrophe that happened where a teacher was quoted saying, well done, you've started thinking like a white boy, or you've let your side down by getting good marks. This appalling display of overt, of overt racism is catastrophic. And what was worse was the school lack of action to call this man to order. The St. John's disaster is not an isolated incident because the issue of racism in private school is very, is very relevant for kinky-haired, brown-eyed boys and girls just like me. It is our reality, and a reality which we cannot escape. Private schools in particular keep the traditionalistic ways of their founders and have become a haven for insidious bigotry and racism. Being a black girl in a private school is challenging. I have to run away from people who are constantly trying to scratch their hands in my hair without my permission and even called my afro a uh, mushroom. I have to make a conscious effort not to sit with a group of my black friends because when, we're in a, when we are in a lecture or a talk, because even if we're not making a noise, everybody's going to blame us. The worst racism is the subtle kind, the one that's silencing that not many people will be able to point out. Like when a teacher says to you, you should probably apply for a job and pick and pay. Being a black girl in a private school has made me challenge, I've had to challenge my identity as a black child. When faced with Eurocentric standards of beauty, I've had to ask myself, who am I? I once was a silly girl and confirmed and had to chemically straighten my hair and I hated it. It was the worst decision I've ever made because in doing that, I felt like I lost a part of myself. From that day onwards, I realized that I had to stay true to my Sitwana roots and be an African child. The issue of how we can stop racism, why do why do so many children of colors have such negative experiences in private schools? It's because if we look at it, these schools were built over a hundred years ago, and these are former Model C schools that were probably made for the expatriate white English man's daughter. The schools are failing to evolve at the same rate of the society, and therefore neglecting the rights of the black students and other students of color in their environment. The solution to our problem seems quite obvious, inclusivity. But what does that mean? I believe it means making the demographics of the school represent the demographics of South Africa. And how can this come about? We need to start at the top of the school food chain by making the board more diverse. Because as much as we think that the school principal calls the shots, it's the school board that's in charge. The school board is in charge of the school's finances, the school's legal standing, and the passing of new policies. By, making, by having a more diverse board, more opinions of many cultures can be considered when new policies are being made. For example, I would want a black woman to speak on my behalf when a new policy about hair is being made. The same way we would want a chef to critique a souffle rather than a mechanic or we'd want the zoologist to speak about zoo animals than a marine biologist. As we, it is also important to remember that we need to have more than one representative for, this, for that race, because one person does not represent the entire ideologies and experiences of an entire racial group. Different intersectionalities need to be considered. As we move down the food chain to teachers, we find that in a study conducted by the Sunday Times, that 90% of teachers 
in the most expensive private schools are white. This, subconscious, this subconsciously teaches students of color and white students that teachers of color cannot be in places of power. We need to have diversity training workshops where students and teachers can confront their own prejudice and privilege. However, diversity training is not enough. Students need to see themselves accurately represented in the teaching staff, the learning materials, and textbook. I don't think it would cause any harm to substitute an ideal husband by Oscar Wilde with Chimamanda Ngochi Adichie's Purple Hibiscus. Schools need to have a very pro-African outlook and place equal emphasis on the languages that are taken there. For example, there's a clear hierarchy at my school when more emphasis is placed on Afrikaans, they have an accomplished public speaking team, whereas all the other languages do not. There are also three Afrikaans classes, one Zulu class, and one Susutu class, which I am part of. There's only four of us in it, and we're cooped up in the middle of nowhere in the school. This subconsciously creates a hierarchy in the school, even in the way that they are placed. The Afrikaans classes are all at the top, the Zulu classroom is at the outskirts of the school, and my Susutu classroom is cooped up in Okonasa. Schools need to have concrete anti-racism policies that detail what racism is, what a student should do if they are a witness of racism, if they are a victim themselves, with accurate and fair punishments for the perpetrator. This will make students who are victims feel supported by the school. And I believe only then can schools truly say that they truly stand against racism. It is also important to critique the elitism in private schools, which places a barrier between the average South African child and the rest and quality education. The government fails an average South African student by providing terrible education. We say that education is the key, yet the poor are kept locked out. Students need to realize their power and take action against injustices. Parents just as much. It is important that as a country, we move on to a better future. Thank you.